It's a 10 minute warning to our forerunner sled. We would like to remind all spectators that we do not reach over the railing to touch the track. It's just ice. Keep in mind, the track is just made of ice. There's no reason to be reaching your hand where you could get injured. I have cameras. <laughs>
again to all the spectators, please don't overhang anything into the track. Don't try to touch the track. It's just ice. It's cold. Into the heart. We're lining up curve 19. Lake Placid in the Adirondack Mountains in upstate New York, a double Olympic venue, and it is also the playground for the eighth and final, the season finale of the BMW IBSF Bobsleigh and Skeleton World Cup. Well, welcome back everybody to the beginning of two days of bobsleigh action after dramatic skeleton races on Thursday. Friday morning sees us get in to the Monobob season finale. Well, what a dull first heat it was. The track record was only broken six times in the first seven sleds. One of those to set a new mark was Canada's Cynthia Appiah. Cynthia back on form after a very flatline season and has not seen her on the podium once in third place. She's 400s off the lead, 100th behind Alana Myers-Taylor. The Olympic silver medalist in women's monobob, our reigning world championship silver medalist in women's monobob, back to racing for the first time in Lake Placid since December 2019. And she's 300 behind our first heat leader, the new holder of the outright track record, Brianna Walker. The Aussie who has been on the podium in the medals in half of all the Bonobot races she has contended has yet to claim a gold. He is slenderly ahead. And that's just the race. Because it's the season finale, we're also looking at the World Cup point standings. If nothing changes, and that if is doing a lot of heavy lifting here, if nothing changes, Lisa Butvitz will be the World Cup champion. But if Brianna Walker wins this and nobody else moves, she will be second by two points ahead of Lauren Alter, who is currently in second place. And there is Brianna Walker warming up in the parking lot just above the current start. You go higher up the hill there, that's where the old start house was. For the mile track, further back up the hill again was the original mile and a half. Uh, a very intimidating piece of ice. <laughs> Alana high-fiving Lauren Alter, even though she turned away. And by the way, four US sleds in the field because Alana Myers-Taylor, as a returning mum, a new mum, has a maternity buy to get into the races. So she doesn't actually take up one of the USA spots. And now that uh, Riley Tecek has qualified back into their team, USA actually have four sleds here, although Alana does not take up part of that allocation. Imagine it's like the junior world champion at the world. There you go. Victoria Chinanska will be first off, ahead of her, in the timing 
Georgieta Popescu of Romania, Deborah Annan, who, like a number, is making her debut here. In the 17th and final sled, it's crunch time for Bree Walker. Bree's been in that situation before, did not claim the victory. Let's see if the second time does not do things to her head. It is the final run of the BMW IBSF Women's Monobob World Cup season 2023-2024 here in Lake Placid. Martin Haven with you, ready to enjoy the action as Slovakia's Victoria Tinanska is about to get us underway. Victoria, the silver medalist in the 2020 Youth Olympic Games in Youth Monobob. Started 6.21 in the first heat, 6.22 in the second. Temperature has risen a fraction, still comfortably below zero, and the ice will be cold as well. Start records haven't been threatened so far this weekend. That might be, who knows? Looking a little more controlled, much more controlled, actually, than she was in the first heat. Victoria Janaska dialing herself back in. I think the track is harder and faster. It's had another fresh spritz on it in the gap between the first and second heats. Whoa, enormous skid again through the chicane, same as in the first heat. comes up to the line, 61.59 was her first run, 60.98, oh, half a second quicker, that's much better. So, 60.98, only half a second off the record as it stood before today. See the articulation really opening up there, you can see quite clearly through the gap to see uh, Victoria's red and blue race suit again here 12 13 gets tapped away from 13 comes nicely out of Benham's bend into the chicane but gets that hit early on and then that big sideways skid that she had this is uphill and over a brow in the chicane it really exaggerates the mistakes well World Cup best of ninth in Segulda she's not going to match that here's Georgetta Popescu the Romanian beat Victoria Chinanska to the Youth Olympic Gold in Samaritz in 2020, but has not performed as well as her since. Georgetta only her second World Cup race this season, finishing 20th place in Samaritz. 700s up, didn't start as quick as her Slovakian rival. And the speed is not there either. Whoa. Whoa, again. Steady on there. She looked in a lot of trouble at the top of the track in the first heat, and it just seems to be getting a lot better. Skids everywhere, very late. 12 to 13. Out of 14. Well, she gets a better run through the chicane, but she's half a second back. Again, late off 17 into 18. Not a great run from Georgetta Popescu. 61-74, three tenths worse than her first heat, and it looked in as well. The first heat looked pretty wild, and that second one looked just as outrageous and slightly out of control. Nice for the athletes. Look at that. That is as close as a crash to a crash as you want. Out of four into five. And gets dumped here as well. And then 12 13. It's a short crossover. Bang. Hits the wall. Never even gets on to 13. All right. So she slips a spot. Victoria Chinanska is the leader as we get to the third of our 17 sleds. And another newcomer here, Deborah Annan, has not raced here before. First time in North America for her. Didn't do the NAC races, although she would probably have been eligible. May well have been that time off and lack of finance were bigger influences in that than another week at the track. 
Well, let's see what she can produce. 13th best start, only 15th at the bottom. She grew up in Europe Cup racing, so she knows the tracks in Europe better than some of them. 6.14, so she matches her first start. She's a tall athlete, but look how much she leans back, and then she's looking around the cow. That's to get the weight as far back in the sled as you can. Little skid in the Devil's Highway. And a nine into corner 10, shady two. Nice, nice-ish exit, little skid into 11. 12, 13, gets tapped away there as well. Exeter Benham's bend, 14, through the chicane nicely, avoids the walls. Second best speed, she's a second up. She should build on that if she didn't get sideways in the chicane. There we go. And across the line, first heat was a 60.73, the second is a 60.48. So quarter of a second improvement for Deborah Allen. 12th in Altenburg on her debut. Probably not going to get there here in Lake Placid. Altenburg, her favorite track, possibly the one she spent more time on than any other, actually. Great place to make her debut. And she's here. Well, why is she here at a track she doesn't know? Because next year she hopes to be here in the World Championships. And any knowledge going into next year's Worlds is going to be worth its weight in gold. That's not a bad run through the chicane. Got away with that entirely. That's a big smile. Katy Bile of Austria is next up. Katy, 30 years old, raced here in women's bobsleigh in December 2019. That was her first trip here. And of course, all sorts of things happened in the world. And then just as we were getting back to normal, she wasn't, she had a stroke at the end of the 21-22 season, missed all of last year. 6-0 start, that's 800s quicker than her first heat. And this is looking a little bit smoother as well. 3,400s up on Demora Anna. 87.2 kilometers an hour. And she's got the best speed as well. Building that lead, 3,800s up. That's just 4,500 over Deborah in the first heat. Third best speed. It's going to be close. It should be about the same speed as Laura Adams, 60.48 or so, or the same time, 60.44. So she adds another 400. So 60.66 down to 60.44, 2200 of a second improvement. <laughs> Not a bad transition. He's got very strong driving instincts. Still really learning these monobob sleds. As I said in the first heat, pretty much everybody in the field has got the whole of last season's experience as an advantage over her. One more day. One more day. Yeah, so no zigzags for these ladies tonight. Most of them, I think, will be in the women's race tomorrow. Next up, Riley Tichek for the USA. Riley, the fourth of the US sleds. This is her first World Cup of the season, only the sixth of her career. She did most of the World Cup season last year. And finished in eighth place in the race here last year. She was eighth in Whistler as well. The two North American tracks, or two of the three North American tracks last year, producing her best at World Cup results to date. In and down, 6.30 first start, 6.35 in the second. She raced three weeks ago in the World Championships. 
in the women's bob, did not compete in the monobob though in Winterberg. Second best speed. She's behind the eight ball here to Catty Bile, but now she's bringing it back. Best speed of all. 109k, 67.7 miles an hour. Decek turns on the afterburners, shoots the chicane nicely, tiny little tap to square her up going into 17. 123.3, 76.6 miles an hour, still accelerating. Now the climb uphill with the speed on board. Should be about three tenths in the lead, half a tenth in the lead. 60.39. And she had a 60.21 first heat, so not as quick. But that will mean that she will be no worse than 13th place. Macy Lynn there helping with the sled. As Riley goes high five crazy with the fans. And she doesn't start fast, but she keeps the speed on board. It's a heavy exit for uh, five to six, but there's been a few of those. <laughs> they are the US Marine Corps officer is down and done. But next up, teammate Sylvia Hoffman. Sylvia in a tie for 11th place with just 12 hundreds in the bank. Got a 578 getaway. That is 100th of the fastest in the first heat, which was her own teammate Keisha Love. She started 580 in the first heat, takes a little hit on the end of the three. Second best velocity. Katy Bile actually the fastest at that stage. At nine tenths up. Fourth best speed. Whoa! Rocking and rolling a little down through the labyrinth. Adris is Kane treat that. Tap, did tap. Fifth best speed. It's losing speed, but you'll have the advantage over right. Okay. Going to come flying, maybe three tenths up. 4,400s up, she did hold it together at the bottom. 60.07 compared to 60.09 in the first heat. Now that's the kind of consistency that Sylvia Hoffman has been trying to build. And once you can repeat, then you can start to improve consistently as well. <laughs> that's gonna be a, a lot of sore high-fiving gloves there. Late transition, seen that a lot down in the Devil's Highway. Thanks for everyone watching at home. We love you so much. The rest is yet to come. Oh, Sylvia Hoffman, very early in her driving career. Bianca Rivi at the beginning of the Monobob World Cup last year. Rocks everybody by taking gold in the season over in Whistler. The first ever Monobob World Cup race. That remains her only win to date. Finished sixth place here last year. That was the third run of the North American leg. She can't get in. She's in trouble down into one. Luckily, the sled pretty much found its way round as she was trying to get hang up her hands on the D rings. And she's got to put that flustered start behind her. Only the fifth best speed. She was in a dead heat with Sylvia Hoffman. And she's going to lose ground here out to 67 hundreds back. Fourth best speed, 67 miles an hour. Nearly one mile an hour off the base of Riley Tejek at that spot. Hoffman with the lead. That's coming back but not enough, surely. It's got better speed than Sylvia Hoffman, but not enough ice to capitalize on it. He will be behind at the line, second place. 60.49, four tenths slower than her first heat. And that start 
Well, it was a 6-11, not a 6-21, but she could not get herself into the sled. Looks like she's physically okay. So leaps in and then tries to drop it in front of the seat. But her knee gets caught. She has to stand up again and drop back in. And into one, clearly one hand in the air. This does not have a steering wheel. You can't steer it with one hand. Yikes. Well, there you go. <laughs> Kids are having a good time cheering. Seven down, ten to go here in Lake Placid. The World Cup Monobob season finale. Sylvia Holt with the lead, looking for a top 10 finish. And Sylvia comfortably outpacing her previous World Cup outing. Best of 16th in Altenburg. It's going to be 11th at worst. It's a cold, old day today. Great to see fans out from the town nearby. This region, Lake Placid, has a lot of history. The legendary Olympic miracle on ice where the unfancied USA beat the all-dominant USSR in 1980 to the ice hockey gold. That was in the arena in the centre of town. There a nice new museum there opened a couple of years ago. Can-Am hockey tournament, always a big draw in town as well. And in front of the high school on Main Street, they freeze the uh, front lawn every year and lay down a speed skating or skating oval. They have the ski jumps on the way out here. They have the biathlon course newly revisited with a whole new range and starts and finish facilities, penalty loops and everything just by the, the big uh, admin building and training centre and push track in the centre of the track here. And uh, lots and lots of development going in here in the Olympic Regional Development Association and New York State. Spending millions and millions of dollars here upgrading all the facilities. Hey guys, thank you guys for watching at home. We're here in New York, USA. We're at the World Cup here with IBSF. We're happy to be here and happy to support Team USA and represent everyone here. There you go, don't need me. Well, it's great to see the fans out here. And actually down by the push start building where the, uh, the canteen and everything is, you'll see lots and lots of kids out on the biathlon course as well. Not shooting so much, but certainly skiing. Final 10 sleds of the Monobob World Cup campaign. We're here in Lake Placid for the season finale. And in 10th place after the first of the two heats in his final race, Great Britain's Adele Nickel. First time here in Lake Placid, did not do the NAC races either. Budget is thinner than a thin thing and did not stretch to that. She's in a rented sled, but it shouldn't be too much different to what she's used to. Sixth World Cup race for her in Monobob. She finished ninth in the World Championships, ninth in Innsbruck is her best World Cup result. 6-11 getaway, 6.08 in the first heat. Well, she had 300 in hand over current leader Sylvia Hoffman. You'll need a nice, clean run. She had a little late flop off two, square tap off three, third at best speed. Sylvia Hoffman's start advantage took her a long way down, but these are nice lines from Adele Nickel. Little skid coming into Shady. Second best speed. She's really developing as a driver. Bear in mind, it's a track she's never been to before in any capacity. To get through this game, she's going to lose her spot to Sylvia Hoffman. But she should still be in second place at the line. That means no worse than 11th place. Ducks ahead. It is second place, 60.32. Not quite as quick as she would have hoped. She'll be racing in the women's pop stage tomorrow with Kaya Placine, her break woman. 
Adele. Real breakout season four in the World Cup in women's bob and in monobob. Again, that little skid early on. And here, 11 to 12, just getting tapped away from 12, uh, 12 to 13, rather. And then out of Benham's bend through the chicane, gets the early tap, the big skid, unfortunately. Robs her of a couple of tenths. Right, she lies in second place with nine to go. Next up, Germany's Maureen Zimmer, last year's junior world champion in monobob and junior European champion in monobob, taking the place. I love the way she gets into the sled, just sinks into it like, like she's made of ether or something. 590 getaway, but that advantage has gone already over Sylvia Hoffman. Not having the tidiest upper part of the track. Look at that, only eight best speed. Ooh, and again, late exit. Maureen Zipper again, new here, but he was here a few weeks ago in the NAC races, North America's Cup. And he got two eighth place finishes, but more importantly, got another six, eight, ten runs down the track. Eight best speed. 2800's back. He's going to drop a couple of spots here, I think. He's not going to stay in front of Adele Nickel. And across the line, she is in third. Sylvia Hoffman leads. Adele Nickel in second. Maureen Zimmer dropped a couple of spots. It is six tenths slower than her first heat. Well, she'd be disappointed with that, but the speed went away early. These early mistakes, look at that, long skids like that when you're doing 20 or 30 miles an hour, perversely are much more damaging than when you're doing 60 or 70 miles an hour. And again, three down to four, didn't have control. Through the chicane, much better. But by that stage, she was too far behind. Melanie Hassler of Switzerland is next up. Eighth after the first of our two heats. And her advantage over Sylvia Hoffman, 24 hundredths of a second. So nearly a quarter second up. She'll start maybe two tenths or so slower than Sylvia. 5.99 to 5.80 in the first heat. Sylvia dropped it to 5.78. So most of Mel's advantage may be gone already. It is 5.95. She too found a few hundreds. And she drove herself into contention. Got more experience in these mono sleds. Even if Sylvia might have a little bit more on this track itself. Now raced here at the beginning of last season into fourth place, only just off the podium. Deck of best speed, slender advantage. We're in single digits. Gets a good chicane, third best speed. About the same as Sylvia Hoffman. Three tenths in it. That should be enough for her to take the lead and guarantee herself at least an eighth place finish. It is 59-89. Well, that's a really good run from Melanie Hassler. Found 500 extra at the start, and her second heat only 400 slower than her first. Big smile on her face. Just got a little tapped away there. But that was OK. Put her onto the turn in the right place. And here down into the chicane. Not much contact with the wall. This gets pinged away a little and a tiny rub on the driver's left. Sets her up nicely for 17. Done. Done with the mono. And she, I think Mara Morel will probably be in tomorrow's women's race. Andrea Greco. Probably with Teodora Vlad behind her tomorrow. But first, trying to get a top six finish. Six fastest start for Andrea. And ended up in seventh place. Die! Only 300s ahead of Die! Melanie Hassler. Die! 
That's a race the Monobob World Cup on this track before 587, 86 in the first heat, so another good strong start from Andrea. And she's been a little bit like Cynthia Pia through the season with more frustrated frowns than smiles. Did get a European silver medal earlier this year. They wish we did last year in the Monobob. Back in 2020, 20, 20, was it? In uh, the women's Bob say European silver in that as well. 200s in it, but only the 8 plus speed, not enough. He's gone from 1200s up to 200s back. And she might be as much as a quarter second behind at the line. Has not got the speed on board. Kukens back, 60.12. Melanie Hassler moves up. Well, both Melanie Hassler and Andrea Greco have been medalists in Monobob. Their best results are silver medals in World Cup races. But neither, I think, are going to be on the podium here in Lake Placid. Have to wait and see what another year of experience does to this field before the world champs. Look at the ducking ahead out of the slipstream there, going through the chicane. And then again at the bottom, you can see how far back she sits. That's the advantage of being a tall athlete, long levers. You can get the weight onto the back axle. Well, she's disappointed with that. Lisa Bookwitz, our World Cup points leader needs to complete this run to take her first ever Crystal Globe as a driver. What a season this woman has had. Four wins in World Cup Monobob races. World Championship bronze, 5-8-0. She has been the class of the field. Only once off the podium. And that was the season opener in La Plan, where she was in seventh place. And right now, six after the first heat here in Lake Placid. Little tidier than we saw from Maureen Zimmer. Little tidier, I think, than we saw from Lisa as well in the first heat. I'm sure she would love to try and fight her way back onto the podium. But she was nearly half a second out of the medals. 2800 up on Melanie Hassler. Only 12 of those from the first heat that the caps continuing to shrink. Should be just about enough to keep her head in front. Yes, it is. 59.81. Uh, 59.73 first heat. 59.81 second. Essentially, all she needed to do, realistically, was not crash it. But she's done what she needed here. It's not going to end with a final medal this season in Lake Placid. But next year, when we come back, it'll be the Monobob Worlds and the Women's Bobsleigh Worlds, and she will be a factor in both. No question at all about that. <laughs> and you know what? A couple of evenings in zigzags, and her English will improve enormously. Lisa Bookwitz leads from Melanie Hassler, Angie Greco, five to go. Final five sleds in the BMW IBSF Monobob World Cup Series, and here is our star monster, Keisha Love. She is an absolute rocket sledge. 577 first heat getaway. Kaylee Humphreys there at the top of the track watching her former break woman. They won medals together last year in World Cup bobsleigh races. Kaylee not competing this season as she expects her first child in the summer. 576 new start record. Set a new start record in the first heat, sets a new start record in the second. And that is the caliber of pusher that she is. It's her first year driving sleds. As I said, last year she was competing in the World Cup and the World Championships as a great woman while learning to drive when she had a free week. 
This year, boom, first place weekend, gold medal in the plan, gold medal in the hammer. He is going to be a massive force for the people. Look at the way he shoots us today. Six best feet. Well, still have enough to beat the World Cup champion, leads the footprints for the line. It'll be a top five finish for Peshawar, 59-69. Lisa does not care. She will take the Crystal Globe as the season's champion. And Lisa Bookwitz in only her second year of driving. Are we going to see that kind of performance next year from Keisha Love when she goes back to tracks that she's seen before? Is this realistically this year? It's the only track that she has seen before in the entire World Cup campaign. And the ones where she's fared best, La Plan, Lillehammer, are the ones where she had more than six runs of training, where they had an extra training week. Well, what a great season it's been for Keisha Love. Four to go, and this is where we get serious for the medals. Lauren Alter looking for the runner-up spot in the World Cup campaign. And looking for a medal, the newly crowned double world champion, 593 getaway. 1400 got gold, and 10,000 of the medals in the first heat. Oh, long skid, in trouble, three to four. Hit the wall, no stayed in, then turned away from corner four. And she's in the red already. Keshulov had phenomenal speed early on from her start. 1300's back. And Lisa Bortwitz is only 2200 back. Doesn't get a great chicane, but she's brought it back. Only 400 back. Better speed than Keisha Love at the bottom. Lara Nolter doing what she does so well. Steadying the ship and driving herself into the lead. 59-8-0. slower than her first heat. It did not look as tidy, but Lauren Alter has the lead with three to go. Double monobob world champion. This is the scene of her first ever monobob win last December. That was not great from three down to four, but out of Benham's Bend, down into the chicane. She got about as good a rub as she could through 15 and 16. Square tap, square tap, no skids. Got bounced up and down a bit. So quite a lot of impact there. Last one of Bob, she'll be happy with that, at least until the postseason. Three to go. Now then, if any of the remaining three win this race, they will be a first time winner. Cynthia Pia in third place, 400s off the lead in the first heat, has a best of silver, so does leader Brianna Walker, Alana Myers Taylor, a best of bronze. 582 compared to 590 in the first heat, and Cynthia was all smiles on the first run, really for the first time this season, getting in the way she wanted. 2,900 up on Lauren Olga. Third best speed. All right, neither of them as quick as Keisha Love or Riley Tipton. But now she is 109.4, best speed of all, 68 miles an hour. Hard hit down in the labyrinth. Out of Venom's Bend, hits the chicane a lot. Ninth best speed, 3,700 up. Surely that is enough for a medal. Is it enough for gold? 2,300 up. What she got left of the line? Cynthia Appia will lead by three hundredths of a second. Well, she's in the medals. That's not really what she wanted. She has won her first medal of the season. And she is jubilant with that.
but when you're in a battle for gold covered by 400s with three slags, you want to win it. Well, not a bad exit here. You can see how bouncy the track looks. A little skid there. And again, 11 to 12. Got that big double tap. You can see her hair being thrown around there. And the chicane was not the kindest to her either. First medal of the season for Cynthia Apia. Now then, for Lardemise Taylor. 300s off the lead, 100th ahead of Apia. One medal this season. Alana took silver last time out in the World Cup in Altenburg, the week before the World Championship. What can she do here? 582, great start. Matches up here. She's a silver medalist in the World Championships in Winterberg a month ago. Is she going to take a medal here on home ice? Creeping away from a pier, a fraction more speed, a fraction cleaner as well. But only a hundredth in it, not as quick as Cynthia. She's in the red. Gets a good chicane, back in the green, third best speed. This is going to be to the hundredth of a second, no it's not. Alarm is down more at the bottom, a tenth of a second up. He's going to take the lead with one to go. 59, 66. <laughs> that is the fastest run of the second heat. One sled remains. So either, either Alana Myers-Taylor takes her first win here on home ice in Monobob, or it goes to Brianna Walker. Well, down into the chicane, but a little snag on that right-hand wall coming out of Benham's Bend. A little skid on the exit down into 17, but she leads. One sled to go. Well, Brianna Walker's been here before, leading the first heat, and then it all went away. Well, that was in Altenburg. Can she turn that around now? Can she make it happen for her here? 588, 594 in the first heat. She is going for this. It's going to be win it or fin it. Only the six best speeds. She didn't start as quick as Alana Myers Taylor or Spintia Beer. 700 back, the best speed of all. This could be a historic day for Brianna Walker. Keeping it clean in the Devil's Highway. Second best speed, but she's pulled level. She eases in front of Alana Myers Taylor, the hometown queen. This is all about what's happening inside her mind. Best speed of all, Brianna Walker. Out for the chicane as she's clean. 18, 19, 16 hundreds up. It's going to be very close at the line. Who wins the final race? It is Brianna Walker by a quarter Woo! of a second. Ah, ah, first win. The first she was waiting to see. She was waiting to see. Show me, show me. Yes! Yes! You can't do that to a driver. You can't not show them. Brianna Walker. I told you after the race in Altenburg. I told the story of Matt Weston, where he led in Innsbruck. Martin Stukos was the penultimate slider, and it got to his head. And he said it didn't happen the second time, because I was used to it.
And Brianna Walker, this time, he was used to it. The first heat lead, and against all kinds of pressure, she didn't win by single digits. She won by nearly a quarter of a second over Alana Myers-Taylor in Lake Placid. That is how you do it. <laughs> All right, there is an Aussie in the early stages of a major hangover. It's not going to start for another 24 hours and more. And she'll have the women's bobsleigh race tomorrow, but she's won her first ever Monobob World Cup gold medal with Alana Myers-Taylor in second, Cynthia Appy in third, Lauren Alter in fourth. And tellingly, I think that the maths works out now that with that win, Brianna Walker moves up to second place in the overall standings, two points ahead of Lauren Alter. But our World Cup champion wears yellow and red and black. It is, as we would have expected at any stage, pretty much since the first race in Innsbruck, it is Lisa Bookvitt. Her second season as a driver, she is the World Cup Monobob champion. And yes, look, Brianna Walker by two from the world champion, Lara Nolta. Keisha Love just eight points ahead of Alana Myers-Taylor. Some very tight battles. Then Andrea Grecu, Mel Hasler, Cynthia Appiah in ninth, ahead of Ying Ching. And then Bianca Ribby, Adele Nickel ends her rookie season having not competed in all the races in 12th place. It's a fine debut season. And Sylvia Hoffman off a couple of races in 20th spot. Well, there is your podium. And the otters are all over the place. Well, yeah. I, <laughs> Third for Alana Myers, second for Alana Myers Taylor, third for uh, Cynthia Appiah, but gold in the right place in the centre is Brianna Walker. Yeah. Otter than an ot thing. Well, it definitely isn't otter than anything, I don't think, here in Lake Placid. That's it for the Monobob World Cup season. We have two man bobsleigh coming up this afternoon, and that is in just under two hours. At 1400 Eastern, 1800 DMT, 1900 CET. We'll see you then.
somebody talking to me? Am I talking to myself? I'm going to Oh, okay. <laughs> one, two, one, two. Yep. Yep. Buyana Walker, congratulations on your first World Cup win this season. How does that feel? It feels amazing. Uh, I came into this week knowing that I could be competitive and to come away with a win is the best possible way I could end the Monobob season. I'm so happy. We had the fastest time after the first one. Any pressure for the second then? No, I just knew that I needed to execute what I did in the first run. There was a few mistakes, so I tidied them up. And um, I, when I crossed the line, I couldn't even see the time. I didn't know where, where I had finished, So, but I knew it was good, so I knew I'd be in the medals. But yeah, it's even better that it's the win. <laughs> And now a small celebration up to the women's bob tomorrow? Uh, yeah, for sure. Definitely we'll be all heading to zigzags, that's for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.